Hello, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Now, today we are going on a little adventure, and to explain it, I'm just going to go to the map view. Now, you can see here, this is just the normal Kerbin system, as you would expect, but as we start to scroll out past Jewel, you see that Elu is gone, and now we have Sonaris, which actually one of its moons is now Elu, but this is basically Saturn. And then we have the equivalent of Uranus, and then Neptune, and of course Pluto, which um, is basically what Elu was supposed to be, I think. But today we are going to Sonaris, and I'm actually going to try to get out a video every week and explore this entire system. Now I don't know if I'm going to be able to go to all the moons, but I'm going to at least try to get to all the planets. So, now we just have to build a ship that can get there, and to do that we have to find out the Delta V required. So I'm going to use the transfer window planner, which, well, it gives me the transfer window, but also the delta V necessary. And as you can see, it's going to take about 5,000 delta V. I like to round up, and the date is down there, year 4, day 139. So now it's time to actually build this rocket, and I go with the standard three-person module, just because I want to have a few crew just to make this mission a little bit more authentic and then I create a service module and fill it with batteries and general things you need and now I'm just building a small drop pod which hopefully we're going to drop into the actual atmosphere of Sonaris to see what it's like. It's probably going to be just like Jewel but you know it's worth a try so I put a thermometer on there just for fun and now we start looking at what we're going to use as an engine. Now I installed the Atomic Age mod and it has this extremely overpowered engine and yes, it is very overpowered, so I'm actually going to uninstall this for later's epi later episodes, but this is what I use for this one. Now, the one downside to it is it produces a lot of heat, and even with this huge radiator, it blows up pretty quickly. But I take that as an opportunity to test the drop pod, but I forgot I had hacked gravity, so it wasn't really an authentic test. Now I go ahead and cover the rest of it in radiators and just sort of hope that will be okay. I don't actually test it, but I do add some solar panels just to make sure I have enough power. And there we go, that's a very basic spacecraft. I go ahead and add a hitchhiker module to give them a little bit more room, and a scanner just because I want some sciencey parts on there. But now it's time to launch it, and it lifts off pretty quickly, and that's only a third throttle. Um, yeah, these engines are pretty powerful. If I didn't throttle them down, we would be accelerating quite a lot. But this is a fairly standard launch. I did go a little bit higher than usual just to make sure that it didn't flip out of control. Um, you know, I've, I've had problems with fairings in the past, especially last episode where they make the craft unstable. And now we're just, of course, circularizing, trying to keep the apolapsis a little bit in front of us. And this burn doesn't actually get our periapsis up to 70,000 meters, but that's okay because we're really going to start burning immediately to escape Kerbin. And that's because the angle we are at right now is the most efficient to accelerate away from Kerbin to go visit planets that are further from the sun. Of course, uh, when you want to go further from the sun, you want to accelerate parallel to where Kerbin's orbit is, and it just so happens that when you escape from burning at this angle, your escape trajectory is about parallel to Kerbin's orbit. And we're just about done with our burn, getting closer and closer until finally we have an intercept with Sonaris. And I went ahead and moved my crew down to the hitchhiker module so they have a little bit more room to move around. Again, I'm just doing this for fun. Uh, not really necessary, but you know, I get a very pretty picture of uh, Kerbin out of it. And we're going to go ahead and time accelerate and basically wait until we get all the way out to Sonaris. Well, it wasn't long before we had to make a quick stop and I went ahead and transferred Jebediah into the command pod. I don't have to do this to fly the craft, but, you know, I prefer to have someone in there just so it, you know, feels right. Um, but yes, we had to stop at the descending or ascending node, whichever one it is. Um, to make an adjustment so we would get as close to Sonaris as possible 
currently we're actually missing it by quite a lot. And there we go, it looks like we're gonna be getting pretty close to Sonaris. And back to time warping. And right before we get to Sonaris, we have our final burn at Apoapsis, just to make sure that we are in the same plane as all of its moons, because I'm hoping to go visit a few of them. And now it's time to start circularizing around Sonaris, and here I get my first glimpse of it close, and I'm actually pretty surprised with how good it looks, especially the rings. I wasn't quite sure how they were going to work, I had an idea. And from a distance at least, they look pretty good. Um, we're going to have to find out later how they look going through them. But right now, we are of course, like I said, circularizing, slowing down around Sonaris, and we are going to visit its innermost moon here pretty soon. And I set it as a target and keep going until we're about near it, because this is basically the same as rendezvousing at this point. And as you can see there, we are pretty much right next to it, so we just do a quick burn towards it, and that gets us an intercept. And as we get closer to it, I realize just how close to this moon we have to get to be pulled in by its gravity. But eventually we do end up getting captured by the moon, and we are about to hit it actually. So I have to do a quick maneuver to avoid hitting that little mountain there, and then we also want to circularize our orbit. Now, because the gravity of this moon is so low, we are actually going to be traveling, um, as you can see right now on escape velocity, we're only going 70 meters per second, so I'm actually going to try to fly a Kerbal down the surface and land using a jetpack, because we're just moving that slow. I don't know if I'm going to try to get them back, um, I've never tried to do a rendezvous with a Kerbal, though like I said, this is very low gravity and very low speed, so it might be pretty easy. Um, as you can see, there is no scanner data for this moon. Darn, the scanner was brought for nothing, but it does sort of make the radiator flap up and down. That doesn't look stable at all. But now we just get to time warp around this moon and get a look at it, and also that moon that's down there in the corner, and these rings. Just see how this planet looks. Uh, by the planet, I mean Sonaris. This is obviously a moon. A very, very small moon. Now, I don't know how big it is exactly. I think it might be smaller than Gilly, but again, that's just me guessing. I don't actually know the exact size of it. Now, I think it's actually about the size of the Kerbal Space Center, because it feels that small. Like, just looking at it now, and it moving in time warp it looks like it's really that tiny but again I'll have to check on that I'll probably flash up on the screen whether or not that's correct but now it's time to get Bob out of the spacecraft so he hops out of his hitchhiker module and he's got his jetpack on and now we're gonna fly him to the surface thankfully they've now included the uh, nav ball properly into Kerbals that was a few updates ago but again I haven't been playing too much Kerbal lately, as you have all probably already noticed. And it only takes a few little short thrusts to actually get him to land. I could have done a bit more and just basically fallen straight down, but I could just time warp to the surface. Now, I don't know if this is because I have better time warp, or because this planet or moon has not been set up with the time warping system, but I could time warp basically all the way to the surface. I don't know which one it is, but Honestly, I like it because it would be a pain to get all the way down with the standard time warping rules that apply to other planets. In fact, I think I remember a lot of people complaining about trying to land on Gilly. Now, it looks like I'm moving faster than I am. Again, you have to remember the scale of this little moon. But I'm just gonna go ahead and slow down. I start using the nav ball just to make sure that I'm moving perfectly in line. It's a little rough right now, but eventually I find the retrograde marker and sort of control myself down to the ground. And I could have let myself fall, but I didn't really have time for that, so I went ahead and pushed down and slowly descended towards this ridge. And we have touchdown! The Bob has landed. Yep, and then he took a step and flew off into space pretty much. Yeah, don't walk on low gravity planets is something I figured out. Because they'll do the walking animation and then sort of freeze until you reset the jetpack a few times and then it figures it out. 
Also, another thing I find funny is that when they do that getting up animation, it's the same for every planet, regardless of gravity. Like, it's a really forceful action, and it didn't even, like, lift him up at all. But then he takes a step, and he goes flying into space. Like that. Yeah, I was trying to walk using downforce from the jetpack, but it didn't really work out, so you basically have to fly everywhere on this planet. But for now, we're just gonna look at the pretty ring, which looks sort of like the Milky Way would to us. In fact, right behind it is the Milky Way in Kerbal. I can't believe I haven't noticed that till now. Now, you also might notice that we are in a empty, dead space. Oh, wow, Bob looks creepy there. Yeah, but we are in a dead space in the ring of Saturn, or Cenaris, and that's because this moon is supposed to be a copy of Pan. If you don't know, Pan is one of Saturn's moons, and it's in the ring, and it's actually cleared a little path because it's built entirely out of dust. Also because it's being built out of dust in the ring, it's got a ridge around its equator because that's where all of the dust collects as it travels. It's a really interesting shape and probably a very interesting moon. Unless, of course, you want life, then you need to go to Europa, but, you know, that's another story. Right now, we're just looking at Bob's little flag he's planted on the surface that has my H backwards. This happened in the last video, too. I don't know why it keeps happening to me, but my H is always on the wrong side. Ugh. Kerbal hates me. But there we go! We have a nice picture. That will make a good thumbnail for this video, as you've probably already seen when you clicked on it, unless I chose something else. But that's it for this moon. Um, now I just got to get my Kerbal up to my spacecraft, and I do fail on the first try because I was using target velocity instead of actual orbital um, velocity, which would help me a little bit more when I'm trying to get into orbit. But I land and then reset my velocity because I realized what the problem was and then it's a very easy thing to get up there. And we actually intercept with it right away. And there we go. Just accelerate over to it and hop on and that's about it. Now I set up a maneuver to go to the second moon that's in the rings. And, of course, it is that green line there. It's on the outer edge of the rings. It's not really in them, but it's close to them. Probably has an effect on them. If there was actual gravity on them. But you, you know what I mean. And we do a quick acceleration to do a flyby of it. We get pretty close. There you go. And then I go out to visit the furthest moon. Um, I forget what its name is. I, I didn't get to visit all the moons. I was running low on fuel, and then I was just going to dump my probe through the atmosphere of Cenaris. And if you're wondering, that was what it looks like to go through the ring of Cenaris at a reasonable speed. Yeah, it wasn't that smooth. There was just a big void of no ring. But yeah, I do a few burns just to make sure I can get close to that last moon, and then I release my drop pod, which I decelerate until it's well within the atmosphere of Cenaris, so it's not gonna escape. I don't know if it's going to explode instantly either, but it's not going to escape, that's for sure. But now we get to decelerate our little spacecraft here, and I run out of fuel just in time for a roughly circular orbit, and then my Kerbals are trapped there forever. But now it's time to return to our drop pod, and we overshoot on the first try. Luckily, I had quick save, so we could have another go of this to get a little bit more clear results. Now, I descended very slowly, however, along the way I eventually did discover that I had not rotated my probe properly, so it was not getting sunlight, and thus we had no power. So we couldn't control it, and we also couldn't read the thermometer, which is really what I was interested in looking at, because, you know, that was the only thing I didn't really know what was going to happen. But we soon enter the atmosphere, and kaboom. Yep, it exploded right away. Luckily, I realized that it wasn't the entire probe, and I switched. It was just the docking port that exploded, and I was sort of expecting that to happen when I designed it. But now I'm just going to leave you to watch it descend.
do 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 oh, yep we've landed our spacecraft has had a spaz attack and it is spinning all over the place oh wow and there we go yep that's it we've landed on Cenaris I'm pretty sure that's exactly what happens at Jewel if you didn't know and yeah that's basically it now you just sort of bob up and down well I guess we had to slow down our horizontal velocity but yeah once we do that we just sort of bob up and down a few hundred meters and that's pretty much it this thing will be basically land on Cenaris I think you will probably delete it if you leave it because it's being stranded in the atmosphere but other than that it's pretty much just gonna sit here forever bouncing up and down endlessly well I guess that's all for now if you want to see me visit the rest of the outer planets come back next week and the week after that I'll be doing one planet every week and for now that's all please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this or more videos of random space things or things I felt like filming I honestly have no idea what I'm gonna do next but I'm Con Hathi. Bye.